thank you, Mr. Governor, for enlightening us the uh, European breakthrough in terms of uh, regulation and, uh, and also cooperation. Uh, with this great metaphor, I'm sure we won't forget. Um, now I would like to introduce uh, Cédric O, the Minister of Digital Transformation, that I joined me uh, on stage to talk about the uh, French uh, tech ecosystem and the supportive public policies. Uh, welcome, Minister. Thank you very much. Um, because this year was so specific, uh, can you tell us about the public policy that have been implemented to support the French tech ecosystem during the pandemic? Yes, first uh, I want to thank both Singapore and the Switch uh, FinTech Festival for giving me the opportunity to, to speak this morning or maybe this afternoon in Singapore. Um, well, as you know, uh, France has always been supporting uh, its uh, startup ecosystem. And, and we've had two, two times during the pandemics. The first one is uh, we tried to absorb the impact of the crisis because uh, to, to some extent we were forced to, uh, to go into lockdown overnight. So it was a, a huge difficulty for the economy, especially for the startups. So we tried to help them uh, in terms of cash, in terms of uh, handling unemployment uh, problems and so on and, and so on be it from uh, an equity or a financing uh, point of view. So, so that was the first part of the plan. And then, uh, as many other countries, there is a question on, uh, on uh, how to leverage on the crisis and uh, to, to build the future of the, of the ecosystems, of the tech ecosystems. So as many other countries, but especially, uh, but maybe with a, a specific focus on tech in, in France, when we uh, designed our uh, stimulus package in order to recover from the, from the crisis, we decided that to some extent tech would be very important within uh, the, that stimulus package, both from an overall point of view, um, getting, uh, bringing more fuel within the ecosystem, but also from a vertical point of view. What we've seen in the past is that uh, the big techs, for instance, have built their power on the consequences of the last crisis in, uh, in 2008. And so we, we decided that France would invest, for instance, in quantum computing, in AI, uh, in cybersecurity, in biotechs and so on, in order to build um, the French economy of the future, and obviously uh, the, the French tech ecosystem is, is a key pillar of that strategy. So you have been active and strongly supportive to the fast-growing fintech uh, ecosystem scene. Uh, but as the fintech ecosystem goes stronger, uh, can you tell us about the dynamisms in the tech ecosystem itself, how it's structured with the French mm. tech and, uh, and the fundraising and, uh, and its resilience? Yeah, since the beginning, President Macron has been laying a great emphasis into developing the, the French tech, I mean, the, the French uh, startup ecosystem. And we are, so that's uh, one of the reasons why we undertook a lot of reforms at the beginning of the mandate. Uh, I'm thinking of, of labor market reforms, of uh, uh, reform on taxation and capital gains, on uh, vocational training and so on and so on. And we are gaining a lot of success, as we saw uh, in the figures that were presented uh, a few minutes uh, um, ago. Um, for instance, if we take the amount of money that is that has been raised uh, by the, the start, French startups over the last uh, the last year, we we doubled um, the amount of that amount of money in two years, and we are we might be in uh, 2020 for the first time in history outperforming the Germans uh, in terms of the of money uh, amount of money that is raised by our startups. So, we we the pace that we that is unfolding is quite fast. But we, we want to accelerate because we know that Europe is still lagging behind if we compare it to uh, China or the US. So we will continue to push stronger on that. Okay, thank you. And, and how do you see the, the recovery or, or the acceleration in the tech sector in France? Um, uh, I mean, after the pandemic, will, will there be fundamental changes or some specific sectors that are more successful and you want to bet on it? Um, well, uh, I'm not sure this is uh, a, a huge transformation. I think this is an acceleration of underlying trends that were already at stake or unfolding before the crisis. But the, the crisis is helping us gain time, uh, save time. And, and so that's why I, I would not speak about a recovery. I think that this is a, a quicker expansion of the ecosystem. And, and I think that the French startups will raise more money in 2020 than they did in 2019. So that's embodying the fact that we are accelerating. And, and uh, as uh, Winston uh, Churchill uh, 
uh, himself said it, we are not wasting the crisis. Uh, and, and I think that there will be an overall uh, expansion. But one thing that is uh, really interesting is that um, the legacy economy is now digitalizing. We were a little bit lagging behind in France, if you, if you compare us uh, with other European states. But uh, legacy businesses, such as small shops and so on, are forced to digitalize due to the confinement period. So what's interesting is that digitalization is gaining pace, obviously in the startup, in the, in the pure players, uh, but uh, this is all the more true in the legacy economy. And regarding the fintech ecosystem uh, more specifically? Well, um, what's interesting, and, and we saw it on the figures that, uh, that, that on the charts, uh, is that the, the, the fintech ecosystem is, is developing at the same pace than the, the rest of this, the ecosystem, which means quite fast. Um, we, we saw a few rounds uh, over the past year, two years, uh, with Conto, Alan, uh, Lydia, and so on, that we had never seen uh, beforehand uh, in France. So this is really interesting. I think that what, what's interesting, and that was embodied by uh, the intervention of, of François Villeroy Gallo, the, the central bank governors, is that if you want to develop uh, a fintech ecosystem, you show rely on, on the conversation between the regulator, the state, and the entrepreneurs, because trust is key in that ecosystem. And uh, I, I remember that I had uh, two months ago a dinner with uh, François Villeroy, the regulator, uh, and, uh, and a few entrepreneurs in order to discuss how we can uh, design regulation uh, to preserve the reputation of the French uh, place, but also uh, help steer up innovation. And, and I think that we, we can rely on, on a financial place that is quite well known all over the world in France. And we have to, to transform that reputation, to transform our, um, our know-how into, into innovation. So now uh, the French tech and, and especially fintech has grown stronger is, and is ready to bloom internationally because we, we, I think we can agree today that uh, international development is a, is a key dri driver. So is it the reason why La French Tech is so interesting, interested to develop important and consistent relationship with Asia and even more with Singapore? Yeah, obviously. I think that, that um, basically the thing that we are building, trying to build here is an international hub. Um, we want to be leading the way in Europe in terms of, uh, of uh, startups and of in, uh, in terms of innovation. And we all know that if you want to build something big, um, you have to rely on something international. So that's why the way we are being, building it is we want uh, uh, all the best entrepreneurs, the best researchers, uh, and the best companies to come here. And we know that we have to do it in, a, in cooperation with a lot of countries and especially countries such as Singapore. We all see that there are two major players as far as tech is concerned, which are uh, um, China and the US, and the other countries are struggling in order to develop their own ecosystem. Forum. which is a, um, a global forum for regulating AI. And I think that we have to build bridges between culture and between continents, especially Asia, which is to some extent leading the way in terms of innovation, um, in order to strengthen our, our two ecosystems. And um, where do you think will be the priorities in the new uh, newly collaboration? Well, <laughs> I think that there are a few, a few things that are quite interesting. The, the financial sector is, is, is uh, obviously interesting, considering the, the weight of the two financial places uh, that are uh, Singapore and Paris. Uh, there are also areas that we discussed uh, a few days ago, um, uh, for instance, uh, which is the, the, the way to handle the pandemics with uh, technology. Uh, we, we know that, that Singapore was uh, the first country, for instance, to, uh, to deploy a contact tracing app, uh, and the feedbacks that we had uh, were uh, very, very interested, interesting. Sorry, um, And so I think that there are a few verticals like that that we can build cooperation on. And, and I also want to mention um, the GPI that I just mentioned a few minutes ago, 
I mean, we, we all know that technology is developing. We all know that we have to invest in technology and go faster. But there, is, there are also questions among the population about the impact of technology in our day-to-day -day life. And there is, to some extent, a doubt on technology. So we have to ensure our people that technology is built and is developed on, uh, on top of the core values that we've all been uh, uh, sharing over the past uh, centuries. And this is uh, something that democracies such as Singapore and France, but also other countries such as Canada or the European Union, for, uh, uh, obviously, uh, can work together on. Because there is an American model, there is a Chinese model, and, and we think that there could be a third way that we, we could build with, uh, to some extent, non-aligned states. Okay, thank you very much, Minister, uh, for sharing us uh, those um, insights on your strong interest on uh, cooperation and collaboration with, uh, uh, with Asia and especially with Singapore. Um, do you have any, anything to, to add, a special message, for instance, for all the, the people from Singapore who are looking at the session now? Yeah, well, we, we are today in uh, the old BD building of the French uh, stock marketplace talking about technology. This is definitely what we want to do in France. We have a, a huge and a very interesting history about engineering research and building our prosperity on top of, of, that, uh, um, of that research and, and, uh, and technology. And we want to, to build the next stage of that history in France, uh, investing in startups, investing in technology, investing in entrepreneurs. And we want to do it uh, from an international point of view. So I would be really happy first to come to Singapore in the coming uh, months, if uh, the pandemic allows me to do so, but also to welcome all the Singaporean uh, uh, entrepreneurs and, and investors so that we can build bridges between the, the two countries. Thank you very much. And we'll be very happy to welcome the fintechs from Singapore here in Laplace Fintech in the Palais. Thanks a lot. Arnaud uh, de Bresson, I would love to start with you because you're, you're managing uh, Paris Europlace, which is an organization in charge of uh, developing and promoting the Paris financial marketplace and the French financial industry internationally. So what in the long-term strategy in fintech and in green finance, uh, green and sustainable finance, more precisely for Paris financial ecosystem to become the financial center of future Europe. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Marion, for uh, your invitation. Thank you to the Singapore um, uh, FinTech Forum, and thank you to the ambassador of Singapore to, to be here today and to Cedric O, our Minister of uh, New Technologies. Um, Paris Europlus is uh, the organization uh, in charge to develop and promote uh, the Paris International uh, Financial Center. And uh, we are today in a very new context. Uh, first, because of the COVID crisis, uh, but also with uh, what is happening on European level. And uh, I, I mentioned the Brexit, uh, which, is, uh, um, which is not a good new. And we didn't consider the Brexit as a good new because we are European convinced, but uh, uh, in fact, which gives uh, new opportunities in the short term to uh, Paris to grow. Uh, quicker and uh, to uh, to be to be uh, the, the the leading uh, financial center in the European Union in the coming years. Um, and I quote um, a British uh, agency, New uh, Financial, uh, which uh, uh, was giving some uh, new data a few days ago. Uh, as from now, Paris uh, is the leading uh, financial center in the EU27 with 24% of market share, ahead of Germany uh, with 20%. And um, uh, Paris has a major assets uh, in uh, equity markets, corporate bonds, asset management industry, the double of Germany, uh, as well as uh, the new developments in uh, three uh, key areas. First, sustainable finance which is a high priority for us in terms of uh, the strategy of Paris for the future. Uh, Paris is an international leader in green finance, in the green bonds issuings, 
as well as the development of new investment initiatives and the BPI uh, is contributing. A second, a financial innovation and the fintech. Uh, we have created here um, the financial services cluster dedicated to accompany and develop the fintech and we bring uh, the French fintech uh, abroad on international fields. We were in Singapore a few months ago in uh, last January when it was uh, still possible to travel and we will uh, accelerate as uh, Minister Cedrico has said and last but not least uh, the infrastructure financing. These are the three key areas to consolidate the position of Paris as a financial center of the future in the European Union. Thank you, Arno. Uh, Arno, the other ones. I have two Arno today, I'm so lucky. <laughs> Arno, you're the executive director of um, BPI France, the French public bank that has become since 2013 the, probably the one-stop shop for entrepreneurs uh, in France. Um, can you tell us about the financial instruments uh, for startup and fintech supported by BPI France, uh, first to become the future uh, financial center in Europe, but more precisely this year, uh, to survive the pandemic and grow faster in the post-COVID area? I think regarding startups uh, and fintech startups specifically, the point was not surviving the pandemic. The point was thriving on the pandemic. Because basically, if you look at the startup ecosystem for most companies, they have been doing very well and the crisis has operated as an acceleration, not as a, a major difficulty for most digital startups. So uh, we had this twofold view, which was that on the one side, we wanted to make sure and to prevent any uh, trouble because obviously it was very difficult times for everyone. At the same time, we had companies accelerating at a very rapid pace, even more rapid than in the past. So we had to do both, helping them to grow in a very difficult context and make sure that no one is left apart on, on, on the side of the road, if I may say. Um, so this is what, what we have done. This is what we have done uh, with, with the French government, devising new schemes to make sure that everyone is thriving or at least surviving uh, and in the digital field again, most of the time thriving uh, during these very specific years. Regarding BPI France, we have always been operating, as you mentioned, some sort of a one-stop shop for startups. So we extend a lot of grants and subsidies uh, on the basis of one to two billion per year. Uh, to, to the French startups. We have specific loan schemes, we have uh, investment schemes, and we also operate as one of the key limited partners for the French venture funds. Um, and we've, we've been doing so for the past 10 years, and obviously we have continued in 2020 and actually accelerated in 2020, uh, again designing and extending new schemes for all French companies, with some of them very dedicated to, to the startup situations. Uh, a lot of uh, equity, let's say, uh, bridge to equity loans, which were very specific to this year. Actually, not so useful because quite uh, interestingly, the venture ecosystem has been working quite well. In 2020, uh, the venture funds have continued to raise a lot of money and have continued to invest a lot in the, in the French ecosystem. So uh, the financial difficulties on this side of the economy were not so big, in fact. Uh, very interesting. And regarding the uh, the action of uh, BPI France uh, itself with fintech, because I think BPI France also transformed itself uh, to use the French fintech to deliver the solutions to help the SMBs. Well, that that's a surprising model. So can you tell us about this integration? Are you testing yourself <laughs> the fintech solution before uh, promoting them? So that's the other side of the coin, because I, I, as the startup ecosystem was doing rather fine, the rest of the economy uh, went through a massive shock. Uh, as Minister Cedrico mentioned, we had to go to lockdown basically overnight, creating huge difficulties for uh, an incredible number of companies. So we uh, uh, we set up to, to help these companies and we were uh, lucky enough to, to uh, to be chosen to extend the guarantees on the uh, on the state granted loan programs so we had basically if you look at it from now in three months we had to extend around uh, 120 billion euros of loans to 650,000 companies over three months of time 
this is not what we are uh, dimensioned to, to do on a regular basis. Uh, to give you an idea, on a regular basis, we extend uh, around 80,000 grantees uh, per year. So we had to do uh, 10 times more in four times less of time. Uh, so to do this, uh, we, we chose to partner with uh, a lot of, uh, of French startups. Some of them we knew before, some of them we didn't know before, but uh, one very important part is that we had started this strategy of open banking and uh, fintech partnerships many years before, and that allowed us to accelerate and to be operational, if you will, so to be live at scale uh, based on a partnership with around 20 startups within 15 days. Um, so, so, so uh, without that, it was impossible for us, and without the maturity of the ecosystem, it was impossible for us. So it, it, it took both internal maturity in terms of being ready and open, and external maturity from all of our partners. And, and you become a beta tester at large scales for fintech solutions. <laughs> so it, it's yeah, it, it, it's it's not beta testing. It was it was really live and at scale. Okay, thank you, Arnaud uh, de Bresson. Can you? Uh, can you also highlight us the strategy developed by Paris Europlas for the fintech cluster, um, more precisely finance innovation, uh, and the key sector of the key sectors of the French fintech? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to uh, underline uh, how the things have evolved uh, in the high tech sectors in France. Uh, we have to say since the election of Emmanuel Macron. And I really uh, want to, to stress that uh, what has been done in terms of um, improvement of the regulatory and fiscal envir environment uh, for France, the reforms which have been made, and the way uh, the high-tech sectors has been considered since, uh, let's say now, three, four years, has been a really uh, change uh, of, uh, of face for, for France and for the fintech sector. Um, more than two, uh, 10,000 uh, startups, 300 incubators. Uh, everybody knows now the Station F, which is a very big uh, incubator for high tech companies, more than 1,000 companies, and many fintech uh, are also located in, in, the, in the Station F. And here we have uh, with Marion uh, Laplace, uh, which is uh, also um, a big uh, meeting point uh, for uh, fintech and uh, investors uh, on which uh, Paris Europlace is uh, contributing. Uh, for us, um, the creation of uh, uh, Paul Finance Innovation, uh, the financial services cluster in 2008, has been really a big success. More than 1,000 uh, fintech uh, have been uh, accompanied since that date, and um, the fund raising has been uh, multiplied by three, like it has been said by uh, um, uh, Elias Canem, uh, with um, um, a big, um, big growth in the fund raising for for the for the fintech. Um, the president Macron has uh, fixed an objective for France: 25 unicorns in three years of time. We are in the process. We already have uh, 14 unicorns uh, which are identified, uh, new ones, and we have 10 others in the pipeline, among them some fintech. So these companies are developing and growing in size, which is a very big objective and an important objective for us. Last but not least for the uh, Pôle Finance Innovation, uh, four priorities. First, to accelerate the fintech development. Um, we have a few sectors of excellence, big data, risk management, sustainable finance, payment systems that the governor has uh, stressed. Uh, all are uh, sectors of excellence uh, for the French fintech. Uh, second, to, uh, to organize the development in the territories, in all the regions of France, and not only here in Paris, and uh, last but not least, accompany uh, this fintech abroad in a, in, on a international uh, fields and meet international investors. This is the role of uh, Paris Europlas. This is uh, the strategy of uh, the Pôle Finance Innovation. So you're both supporting uh, fintechs in France and helping them to go internationally to, to develop abroad. Um, Arnaud Kodou, uh, 
if we, we talk about the, um, helping the fintech to, to go abroad, can we talk about the French delegation you've set up for the Singapore Fintech Festival, I think 2019 or and this year uh, again? Is it um, is it why um, is it because Asian markets are so important for fintechs today? Absolutely. I, I think first it's part of our strategy and part of what we do to accompany the best French startups in, in the more interesting places abroad. And clearly uh, accompanying fintechs in Singapore is, is one of the key points for us in this part of, uh, of the economy for many reasons. Uh, we've been doing so last year and uh, I can tell you we'll be doing so next year too. And obviously we are doing so this year. Uh, very happy to do so. Uh, and, and, and always very happy to see that we can find great companies that are really interested in, uh, in learning about these markets gaining market shares, finding customers uh, in Singapore and in Southeast Asia. Uh, the reason why it's very interesting, I think Singapore has this uh, very specific blend of you know, very good technology, uh, great financial environment, and at the same time, a huge potential of development, which is very specific uh, uh, and really very interesting. So you will find a great competition and, and we have, I think, really great companies and the more they are exposed to the best competition, uh, internationally speaking, the better. So being there is a very uh, interesting thing. And last thing is the uh, regulatory environment in Singapore. It's been mentioned a lot, but obviously the MAS is doing a great job. Uh, the size of Singapore also allows specific things. It's a, it's a very interesting size in terms of you know, trying to, to experiment uh, things at scale, but not such scale as you would find in, in France or the US. So there is a lot of things you can do in Singapore and based from uh, which are very high end and uh, experimental. And at the same time, you can reach out to Indonesia, to Malaysia, etc., which are great markets uh, to conquer with great competition. So really uh, very interesting for uh, all the companies uh, we, we have taken last year. Most of them have set up offices or have a lot of clients now over there and very interesting for the ones we accompany this year, which we, you will discover in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, so, so last year's delegation was, uh, there was success stories. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if we want to be specific, uh, ICA, which is uh, doing, let's say, uh, intensive calculation for risk management, now has an office in Singapore. Kaiko, which is uh, specialized in the, in data for crypto assets, has more, very interesting too, more customers in Singapore and Asia than it has in France, coming from nowhere one year ago in terms of customers in Asia. So, so out of a delegation of five companies, two are now uh, very operationally uh, active in, in Asia and in Singapore. Well, talking about digital um, assets, um, the French Central Bank, European Central Bank are, are talking a lot about uh, Central Bank digital currency and also the governor uh, addressed this topic uh, uh, earlier. Uh, what do you think about this? Um, is it time for internal co international cooperation? Yeah, obviously it is. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's the most freeing issue in the fintech area, I think, is about crypto assets because we, we, it's one of these unique moments when you see that there is a, a real potential for disruption, a real technological innovation, which is massive, which is really a new framework that can, in the next 10 years, uh, really uh, set up a, a revolution in the financial system. So at the same time, we need deep uh, technological uh, skills and, and being very experimental at a small scale. And we need a deep regulatory view be because we are playing with the whole financial system. So at the same time, we need startups with very high end engineers and we need regulators uh, working about financial schemes. Um, so, so we need to find this right mix. Um, it's about inter it's about being international because a lot of use cases are about international commerce, as was mentioned by the governor of the Banque de France. So we need those three elements, startups with very high-end engineering, uh, national regulators and international collaboration. Um, and this we can find uh, in France for sure. And uh, because we have a strong culture of public-private collaboration, 
And this we can also find in Singapore, where the mass has been very active, and we are very happy to see that there is a stronger and stronger collaboration between Bank de France and MAS, with Bank de France now being settled in Singapore, and it's a very promising collaboration on this field specifically. That's why this year we are bringing both Ledger and LGO, which are two uh, crypto assets companies, uh, w which have a lot to, to, to learn and a lot to bring to, to this environment. Yeah, so you, you can learn more about uh, Ledger and the, some of the amazing fintechs of the French delegation this year in the next session. So don't forget to stay with us and switch on the, on the local channel. But uh, before that, I, I wanted to ask you uh, more broadly among the, the fintech ecosystem in, uh, in close to BPI France. Where do you think, in your opinion, France um, is the strongest? Is it in, uh, in credit, in data science, uh, in crypto? And we have your opinion. Well, you named it. I think these three areas are, are we, we are very strong because we have very good uh, math skills and engineering skills. So, so typically, if, if you look at crypto, it, it, it's very important to have these kind of skills. Uh, very innovative people. Um, it's also very important in the AI field. So we are also, for instance, bringing Forcia which is doing AI in the compliance uh, area of the, of the business. So AI is very uh, important and strong for France. Uh, so this is one part of the answer. The other part of the answer, which is also very interesting, is that since we have a very strong historic financial ecosystem and very strong banks, it's a very uh, difficult market. So if you manage to emerge uh, in this market and to compete with uh, the incumbent banks in France, Specifically, it means you have a very good technology and a very good product focus. So we also have, for instance, very good credit companies or basically B2C companies because to succeed, to succeed in this market, it takes very, very good companies and very good skills. So for instance, we have uh, United, which we brought with us uh, last year and which is also coming this year to, to, to this virtual Singapore, um, which is a very good example of a very strong credit company able to compete with the SOCGEN and BNP of, uh, of France. Well, thank you, Arnaud and Arnaud. I think you, you've done a great teasing uh, for the, the next session. So uh, please uh, stay stay with us. So thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, stay with us uh, if you want to discover more uh, on some of our amazing fintechs in the next session uh, on the Hyperlocal channel. Thank you. Well, that was great stuff from our partners in France and a huge thanks to them all, of course. Uh, before that panel conversation, you heard some uh, notes from the governor of the Bank of France, uh, Monsieur Francois, uh, which was great. Really good to hear him outlining his enthusiasm, actually, for his conversations with counterparts here in Singapore, included in those, of course, Mr. Ravi Menon uh, from the Monetary Authority of Singapore. But of course, Marion there with her fellow panelists, just to outline again for you uh, that we were hearing from from Arnaud Cardo, who is the deputy CEO of BPI France. Also, Cédric O, in fact, that conversation started off with him. He is the Minister of State for Digital Transition and Electronic Communication. And really quite fascinating to hear his comments about the importance of the Asia-Pacific region for French fintech. Very much a place to be seen, but also to be doing things. And Paris very much wanting to establish itself now as a financial services hub. That coming through in the panel conversation, certainly with the ad with Brexit and London leaving the fold, what was a 28-nation block, now a 27-nation block. And who wants to lead? Well, Paris wants to lead. France wanting to be the centre of fintech for the European Union. So that coming across. Uh, also uh, there on the panel, Arnaud de Brasson, who is the Managing Director of Paris Europlus, and he was in Singapore last year, certainly singing the song of what can be done in Paris when it comes to the startup ecosystem. So great to hear some of those at views and all about how you can build innovative financial centers around the world. There's much more coming up here on the Global Common Channel for the Singapore Fintech Festival 2020. Keep it right here.